Romans chapter 10, verse 14 and 15. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. If we're going to study this verse, this verse was written by this the book of Romans was written by Apostle Paul. If you're going to read, if you're going to go back in chapter one, I'm just going to give you a small background about, about Apostle Paul and also the Church of Rome. If you're going to read um, Romans chapter one, verse eight to fifteen, makita po natin yan that si ano po si Apostle Paul he desired to go to Rome. If you're going to study here, si Apostle Paul po hindi po siya nakapunta sa church at Rome, but he heard that there are Christians gathering at Rome. He desires to visit that church, but he don't have any opportunity because he was he was in he was in prison. But he wants to go to that church, and then because of his desire, he wrote this letter to give to the members sa church at Rome. So magita po natin dito. That's why sa, sa book of Romans po magita po natin that Apostle Paul tell the church the church at Rome how to go to heaven. That's why po sa, sa book of Rome as a book of Romans we can read the, the Romans road. We can understand the, the story of the gospel. So here, verse number 8 in chapter 1. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. So, Apostle Paul heard about the, this church. For God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making requests if by means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you, for I long to see you. So, makita po natin dito that si Apostle Paul, he longed to see the members that are, in, that are in the church at Rome. That I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end, yea, may be established. That is, that is that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. Now, I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that I oftentimes, I purpose to come unto you. Many times, meaning, Apostle Paul mentioned here that many times I want to go to you, but was, was let hither do, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the, to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you, that are at all Rome also. So here, we can find here that Apostle Paul, hindi wala pong opportunity na kapunta siya sa Rome, sa church at Rome. But he wrote this letter for those Christians that are Rome. Number one, he want to make sure that those people there are Christians that are saved. And then number two, he encouraged them to serve the Lord. Amen? And then in verse chapter 10, verse 14 to 15, he tell them that you also as Christians must preach the gospel must tell other people about the love of God because you already have the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? So here, we're going to, before we're going to, to study this passage, I'm going to bring the message this morning about what's missionary to do. What's missionary to do? Wala po sa ano man, wala po sa slide ko. What's missionary to do? So this text explores a great commitment chapter. In, chap in verse number one, Paul desired Israel's salvation. We can, write there, we can read there. And today's text is one of one for soul winners in verses 9 to 13. This vision states the urgency of missions. That's why, in, let's go back to chapter 10, chapter 10, verse 14. So like Paul mentioned, how shall they call? And again, he asked this question, how shall they believe? And again, he asked this question, how shall they hear? Amen? So three questions we can find there in this chapter, in chapter 10, verse 14 to 15, there are three questions that Apostle Paul mentioned to the church at Rome. How shall they call, and how shall they believe, and how shall they hear? The strategy of missions is sending and speaking. Amen? Verse number 15. Verse number 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. So that's why it is very important for us Christians to talk to people about the love of God. Amen. Amen? Being a missionary, you know, I study what's being missionary all about. Being a missionary is, if you're going to study, being a missionary is to go to a certain place and to preach the gospel. Amen? Amen. To go to a certain place and to tell people, those people that are lost, those people that are unbelievers, those people that don't have Christ, we go to them and we tell 
them about the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's be, um, being a missionary is to go to a certain place and preach the gospel. So therefore, I conclude that every single Christian, we are all missionaries. Yeah. We are all missionaries. Tayo na to missionary. Kasi po, if you have the Lord Jesus Christ in your life, you are now the carrier of the gospel. Amen? But we have different field. But you know what? We have the same field. Like relatives. Those are your field. Relatives that are lost. Or friends that are lost. Those workmates that are lost. Those are your field. Amen? So our goal, our heart must go to them and tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what? Someone told me, William, don't be afraid if you're going to stand in the, in the presence of, of these professionals, attorney, doctor, general, soldiers, police. Don't be afraid. Why? Because sila po is, they're just masters sa degree kung ano po natapos nila. Pero sa, dito po sa word of God, they're ignorant. So therefore, we must tell them about the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Don't be afraid. You know what? Sometimes po yung, 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 pagkat matakot po tayo, that's why hindi tayo maka, maka, ano po, hindi, hindi natin ma, ma, masabi sa kanila ba about the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. So here, what are we supposed to be committed to? God's promise to meet our needs. Not all of us can go to the mission field. Not all of us can preach. Not all of us can teach. But whenever we give, we become partners in the ministry. Amen. Yeah. And giving allows me to be involved in somebody else's ministry. Wow. Not all of you can go to Thailand. Not all of us can go to Vietnam. Not all of us can go to Laos. Not all of us can go to this respected area nation like China, India, and these places. But we can be involved to their ministry through giving. Yeah. Amen. Through giving. By getting involved and, and supporting these missionaries and get involved in mission, that's how we can help these missionaries. Amen. Amen? So here, one of the most dangerous times in your life is when you keep on going to church, listening to preaching, but not growing in God. Oh. Amen? This is very dangerous. The dangerous times of our Christian life is when, it, when your life is when you keep going here, listening to the word of God, listening to the preaching of God, but not growing in God. So, it means we listen to the word of God, but there's no application. Amen? No application. So, here, the title of the message is, What's Missionary to Do? Number one, if you're going to read in chapter 10, verse 14, Makita po natin dyan, verse 15, And how shall they preach except they be sent? So, a missionary to do, number one, is we must be commit, committed to travel. Amen? Committed to travel. The Bible mentioned in the book of Romans, how beautiful are the what? The feet, our feet enable us to travel. Our feet take us across the street or around the world. Why? It is important to go and to tell people about the love of God. Amen. You know, we're going to read Matthew chapter 28, Mark chapter 16. God commanded His disciples to go, to go and preach the gospel. And that verse is not just for the disciples. And that verse is not just for the apostles. But that verse is also for all the Christians around the world. Bakit po nasa Biblia ngayon? Because God wants us to apply that verse as Christians to go and to preach the gospel. Amen? Amen? You know what? If we really love God, it's not hard. It's not hard to go. Amen? If God is in our heart, missionary work is about going. That's why we can find in the book of Matthew chapter 20, go and teach all nations. You know what? That word, go and teach all nations. God gave us the authority. God gave us the power, the authority to tell people about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen? How do we use our faith? How do we use our faith? Do we use our faith to the glory of God? Or do we use our faith to go to a certain place that's not? Amen? Na hindi po yung dapat natin dapat puntahan. We go to a certain place that's not God, Godly place or holy place. Amen? Amen? We must use our faith 
to bring honor and glory to God. You know what the Bible mentioned? Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. You know what? That verse, that simple verse, if you're just going to do a little thing for the Lord, and if you want God to glorify that thing that you, you did, just little thing, you know what? God will be glorified. Amen. Drinking is something, it is very, you know, drinking is something na hindi na po tayo utusan. Automatic po sa isip natin, if we feel thirsty, we drink. We feel hungry, we, we eat. Amen? But God mentioned in His book, in, in the Bible, that if you drink and eat, and if you put that to the glory of God, God will be glorified. Amen? Amen? So here, missionary work is about going. An authority. An authority. You know, Matthew made it clear in this verse that Jesus has all authority. Application since Jesus Christ today has all authority. We may obey Him without fear, no matter where He leads us, no matter what circumstances we face. He is in control by His death and resurrection. Jesus defeated all enemies and won for Himself all authority. Christianity is a missionary faith. Amen? You know what? In our Christian life, we must use our feet to the glory of God. Dapat yung invent, yung ano po natin, yung dapat lahat ng gawin natin. You know, well, we we are born sinner, amen? amen. Hindi naman natin ma makompleto lahat. We are not we are not sinless. We are sinner. We, there are times that we fail God. There are times that we we fail the Lord in our life. But the most important thing in our life that when we fail God, we ask God for forgiveness and we ask and we beg God, Lord, give me wisdom so that I can continue to serve you. Amen? So, you know what? Sa Davao City po, I told my pastor, my older brother, I told him, Pastor, because nang dahil sa pandemic, the result of the, the, the soul winning of our, of our church is na hinto, na stop. So I told him, Pastor, how about we're going to start a street preaching ministry? Kasi matakot yung mga, yung mga Bible student mag one-on-one. <laughs> One on one soul winning. Tapos yung iiwan mo naman sa Panginoon, ma-afraid din siya na. They feel like, maybe my virus. <laughs> Amen? So I told my pastor, how about we're going to start a soul with a, a, a state preaching ministry. So that's why po in Davao, our, our, my pastor, he bought a two, two speakers. And then magpunta po kami sa, 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 da, sa daan. And then we preach the gospel. And then last time I preached, I preach po sa harap ng, ng iglesia ni Cristo. <laughs> Kasi maraming tao dun eh. May, may, may market sa, sa gilid. So I preach the gospel there. And then the next road, meron malaking Mormons. Kasi yung Mormons sa sige iglesia, sometimes magkatabi yan sila dalawa eh. So we went there. And then I preach the gospel. And then next, harap ng mall. Guys, ano mall? Harap ng SM. So we go there. Why? There are a lot of people there that they need the Lord Jesus Christ. But our duty is just be a messenger of God. And God will be the one that's going to, to save the person. Amen? So our responsibility is just to tell. Just to tell. We are just the mouthpiece of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? So what we did? We use our feet. We go there. Why? Because we want people. They can hear. They can listen. And they can understand about the love of God. And also for them to have the Lord Jesus Christ. And then, meron pong night kasi doon sa Davao City, every corner po, meron... Yeah. So, every corner po doon ng Davao City, pag mabuta po kayo ng Davao, magkita niyo po. Kung mabuta kayo ng Davao, just, just text me, sunduin po kayo sa airport. <laughs> so, doon po sa, sa Davao, sa, sa place namin, every corner, ma maraming mga outposts. So, every time mag-street preaching kami, I'm going to ask permission sa police. But there are times that those policemen, they will sit down and they will listen. They were, they were going to listen to us. And then there are times that after I preached the gospel, and then I went there and I, I thanked them. I told them, thank you so much for allowing us to preach in the street. And, he, and one policeman told me, you know what, Mishina, you know what, Pastor? I always heard that message. But today, I understand that you need to accept Christ to have relationship to God. And he told me that I have the Lord Jesus Christ in my heart today. Amen. You know what? Hindi natin alam yung respond ng mga tao. We don't, you know what? God is the one who's going to, to touch their heart. Amen? Our part 
is just to go and to preach the gospel to all the world. Amen. You know what, people around us, you know what, sa statistic po, meron pong 7.8 billion people around the world. 7.8 billion. Sa 800 million, that's that's the point eight. Sa 800 million people po, as I study, yun po mga tao, group of people that accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. So what happened to 7 billion? So they, they divided it, 7 billion. The 3 billion, so they divide 3 billion and 4 billion. The 3 billion is group of people that heard the name Christ, but they don't have the Lord Jesus Christ in their heart. So meaning they're, they're unsaved. And in the 4 billion population remains, is those people that never heard the name Christ. Never heard the name Christ. If you're to go to China, if you're to study China, China po meron 50 million Christians inside China. 50 million plus. But what is 50 million people for, for 1 billion population in China? So hindi na po siya na 1%. Baliit lang na percentage. And then when this American started to preach the gospel, they were crying, they were crying, they were crying. And when the, the American missionary, he observed, every time he preaches, every time he preaches, the people there, they don't have Bible. But they can recite the they, they can recite the verse. So you wonder why this group of people they can it seems like they memorize the entire Bible. And then he asked them, Hey, why is that you almost memorize the entire verse of, of the Bible? And one raised his hand and stood up and he, he, he told the, the missionary, You know what? Because I spent my life in prison for three years. And what we did in prison is just memorizing the word of God. After we read the path, we read some verses, we, we're going to throw it away, or we're going to burn it, we're going to, to do something that the, the guards or the policemen cannot, cannot see because kung makita po sila, maybe there will be additional years na ma-extend yung be, they, they, they're in prison not because they, they did something wrong, they're in prison because they were Christians. So for three years, they're in prison and their, their job is just to study the Bible. And then they were crying. And then one child, he raised his hand and he, he told the American missionary, we've been praying for a long time that our country will be like America. And then this missionary he told the national, you know what? You know what? American Christians, they have at least two Bible every person. Two Bible, at least two Bible per person. But you know what? We don't memorize the Bible the same you memorize the Word of God. Uh -huh. It is the same in our country, amen? We have, we have Bible, we have freedom here. But we, we don't study the Word of God. We study the Bible. Makita lang Bible natin every Sunday. Amen? Every Sunday lang makuha yung Bible natin. And then nakalikabok na. Amen? We need to study the Word of God. We need to learn the Bible. Missionary work demands a worldwide vision. Missionary work calls for a concern for all lost souls. Amen? Amen? Our heart must have the concern for lost souls. Every one of us must have that, that desire. Oh God, help me to tell people about your love. Help me to tell people that you came to this world. You died on the cross. Oh God, help me to have the eagerness, the desire to help people and also to tell them about the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So not just we must be committed to, to travel, but also we must be committed to talk. Now the Bible mentioned on them that preach Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Romans 10 verse 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of them that what? Preach the gospel. You know what, dapat po sa, sa being Christiano is about every time, you know what, last, before I went here, um, last January 11 is my mother's birthday, and he told me that she's going to invite all my relatives and also her classmates. So I went there, and then I told my mom, before, before you're going to, to celebrate your birthday, if, if pag makarating na po sila, sabi ko, I'm going to, to preach the gospel. And my mom said, okay. And then, napuntahan na po yung mga relatives ko, mga, sis, mga kapatid ng mama ko, and then also, mga classmates niya. And then, I stood up. 
First, I shout, I shout, fire! I shout, nagsagot ko, kung sa Bisaya pa, isigit ko ba, sunog, sunog! Kung sa Bisaya, kung sa Bisaya pa, may sabi, sabi ko ba na, merong, sabi ko, sunog! Kung sabi na, sunog, saan sunog? Sabi ko, masusunog kayo sa impyerno if you're not going to listen to me. <laughs> and then I got their attention. And then I preached to them the Lord Jesus Christ. And they listened. You know what? My uncle and also my aunt and also the classmate of my mom, they received the Lord Jesus Christ as the Lord and personal Savior. Amen. Why? Hindi po tayo mahiya. Hindi nga tayo mahiya magkain eh. Magpunta sa invitation ng birthday, magpunta talaga tayo kayo kasi gusto natin kumain, di ba? Hindi tayo mahiya magkain. Tapos we're going to share them about Jesus Christ, mahiya tayo. So hindi po tayo dapat mahiya sa gospel. We must tell people about the love of God. Amen? We must talk and talk and talk and talk. Missionaries talk to people. Why? We talk to them the gospel. We talk to them the word of God. We talk to them about the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Ako po dito sa Manila, hindi kasi ako sanay magsalita ng Tagalog talaga. So sometimes, magdipilas ako dito, may rapar ako magsalita ng Tagalog. But you know what? Kapag ako dito, yung driver ng, ng, ng Grab na kinuha ni Pastor sa, sa akin, I tried to win him the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I told him, I'm a missionary. And I, I would like to tell you about, 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 about the Bible. And he listened while driving. Why? We need to talk. We need to tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ because hindi natin alam kung kailan yung katapusan ng buhay nila. So here, we must be committed to talk. Missionary work is about why we are going to talk the gospel. Why? Because missionary work is about loving people. Loving people. We must show the need of the gospel. We must love them. It is about it, it is about meeting people where they are. It is about seeking people as God sees them. You know what? If you're going to study the gospel, makikita po natin dyan that Jesus Christ always moved with compassion. When He sees people, He was always moved with compassion. Why? The heart's the, the heart desire of the Lord Jesus Christ is to tell them about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We must have that compassion. Amen? Amen? Amen. You know, minsan po sa being a Christian, some, sometimes we, we, we tell God ba, the Lord, I don't understand. I don't understand your calling. You know what? The very first time that I surrendered my life to be a foreign missionary, and then I've been praying for Thailand for eight years. And then sabi ko sa Panginoon, Lord, why Thailand? There are times that I'm, that mag-pray ko sa Thailand, and then I'm going to ask, ask God, why Thailand? And then I, I've been praying to, to the Lord, to Lord, I, to God, if, if there's one missionary that's going to advise me to go to Thailand, I will go to Thailand. So, para nag-condition ako sa Panginoon ba? Sometimes we don't understand the calling of God. But our responsibility is, is not to understand the calling of God. Our responsibility is to follow the will of God. Even though we don't understand. But my part as Christian is just to do the thing that He wants me to do. And in last 2018, meron kaming revival conference and our speaker was missionary Bruce Rice. Amen. But when he arrived to our church, he, talk, he, he talked to me. He said, William, I'm going to talk to you now. Let's go to the apartment. So we went to the apartment and we talked. He told, he told me, William, how are you? What's, what's your heart? Kumusta ka? How's your heart today? And I told him, Pastor, di, ito lang sinabi ko sa iyo, Pastor, I just want to serve the Lord to the full area of my life that I don't know how. And you know what? The very first thing na lumabas sa baba ni missionary Bruce Rice is this. How about consider Thailand? I've been praying for eight years. If there's missionary that's going to advise me to go to Thailand, I will go to Thailand. And this missionary advising me to go to Thailand. Wow. And I'm very shocked. I told him, Pastor, why Thailand? There are other two countries around the world. Why Thailand? And he gave me some. But when we, 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 we talk to him, parang yung isip ko, parang, hindi ko na maintindihan. But I never told him that I've been praying for Thailand for eight years. Then I, I asked God, Lord, for eight years, I've been, I've been assisting my pastor, no, an American pastor now, my older brother, I've been assisting him for, for one year. And then, sabi niya sa akin na, magtulong ka muna dito. Magkita ka ng 10 years. And then after that, you can leave the church. <laughs> so I've been praying. And Lord, if you really want me to go to that, speak to the heart of my pastor, which is my older brother. And then my time na, tinawag niya ako, so sabi niya sa akin, William, kumusta ka? The same way, Pastor Rice asked me. And he told him, I'm fine. So, nakita niya sa puso ko that I really want to be missionary. 
I told him, well, do you still consider Thailand? So I told him, yes, sir. Okay, let's pray. And then during that time, during that time, the pastor told me, well, start your invitation. Amen. So God answered my prayer. Amen. You know what? I just wait and wait and wait and wait until God gave the right time. And He answered my prayer. And you know what? I am so very excited to go to Thailand and to preach the gospel to those Thai people. Yeah. Amen? That's why we the province of Chiang Mai. And then we're going to help a, a missionary there, a pastor there for two years for language study. And then we're going to, to find a place we're going to start the church. But in Chiang Mai, just five Baptist churches for 1.7 million population. Five, only five, including American missionaries. So Thailand is a very needy country. Just in Davao region, if you're going to study just in Davao region, there are 600 Baptist churches in Davao region. Davao City, Davao del, or, del Norte, Del Norte, Del Sur, Oriental, 600 Baptist churches in 3 million population. Dala dito sa Manila, mas marami. Amen? So they need the gospel there. People tayo kong sabihin na, Thailand na naman, Thailand na naman. Hey, we need more missionaries that's going to invest their life. Why? Our responsibility is just to do the will of God. Even though we don't understand, but our part is just to obey. Our part is just to pray. Our part is just to follow the Lord. And lastly, missionary work or what must a missionary do? It must be committed to talk, committed to, to, to travel, but also committed to transform lives with the gospel. Amen? Verse number 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good thing. If you're going to note that verse, verse 15, of them that preach the gospel of peace. You know what? If you're going to introduce to them the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, they will have peace in their heart. Why? This is the completeness of peace. <laughs> Amen? You know what? Most of the Christians, they're going to seek peace. But some Christians, sa mindset po nila, I will have peace if I have a lot of money. Amen? Because there are some Christians, they view money as success. If you have a lot of money, therefore you are successful. Person, no. As Christian, kita po na successful tayo if we follow the will of God in our lives. But there are a lot of people, their mindset, their, their heart is just about money, money, money. Nothing wrong with money. If you're going to invest it to the Lord. But if you don't know how to invest it to God, there's something wrong with that money. Because if you love money, that is the root of all evil. Amen? You cannot, you cannot have peace through money. Because even, even Christ said, even though you have this whole world and lose your own soul, you cannot have peace even though you have everything. Amen? Sino po sa inyo ito, meron 1,000 pesos, pwede po ko hiram? Hiram lang po, 1,000 pesos. Hiram lang po, hiram. Don't worry. Malayo po yung exit ito. Hindi ko makatag po. 1,000, amen. Sino ito po meron? Meron, 1,000, meron. Sino po meron 1,000? Amen. Ito pa. Sino pa po mayroong 1,000? Amen. Sino pa po? Nahiyak yung iba. Wala na? You know what? There are a lot of people, they view money as success. But if you're going to study the Bible in the book of Job, Job chapter 1, the book of Job chapter 1. You know what? In the book of Job, makita po natin dyan, story sa book of Job chapter 1, makita po natin dyan that Job knew how to value his Christian life. Why? 
Because in chapter 1, we can read there that just in one day, in just one day, Job lost everything. Job lost his, his wealth. Everything he had. Open book, your Bible, book of Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1, verse, verse 1. There was a man in the land of Luz whose name was Job. And, and, the, and that man was perfect, meaning this man is matured spiritually and upright and one that feared God and, and issued evil, meaning he abstained from evil. And there were born unto him, unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance was also 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, and 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 she asses, and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. So therefore, Job was the richest man in the East during this time. But if you to read the, 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 the Bible, kung, kung patuloy mo natin pag dyan, we can find that in just one day, Job lost everything he had. Amen? His riches was lost. Some of them were stolen. Some of them were, were dead. Some of them were merong mga fire from heaven. All of his ashes, all of his sheep, all of his oxen were lost in just one day. And then makita po natin dito that the same day, all of his children, di ba, in verse number 2, meron po siyang seven sons and three daughters. The same day, lahat ng mga kids niya were lost. Namatay lahat. Ten kids namatay. And then the next day, he lost his health. Meron po siyang boils sa body niya. And then he lost his wife. If you read chapter 2, verse 9, And his wife said his wife unto him, That thou still retain the integrity, curse God and die. He lost his wife because... The, the, the mindset of his wife, hey, you lost his, your money, you lost your health, you lost your, your wealth, you lost your children. Curse God and I. But you know what? I'm going to respond to Job. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. Imagine that. And then in chapter 1, verse 20, 21, and 22, we can find there that when Job lost his riches, we can find there that Job, ang respond po ni Job, is he kneeled down, he blessed, and worshiped God. Amen? Imagine that. Because Job knew that success is hindi niya makukuha ang success niya sa, sa kids niya, hindi niya makukuha ang success niya sa wealth niya, or sa wife niya, or sa health niya. He knew that the real success as Christian is when we kneel down and talk to God in hard times. Uh -huh. And praise God, and bless God, and worship God in hard times. Uh -huh. That's the real success. Uh -huh. And then there are times po sa buhay natin, if we think po that yung, yung money is the real success in our life, tight giving is not giving. Uh -huh. Amen? Because tight giving is returning giving. Returning. Hindi siya giving, just returning. You just give back what belongs to God. But mission offering is about tight. Hindi mo pwede na ito yung, ito yung tight ko, tapos ito yung, yung hatiin ko yung tight ko para ibigay ko sa mission offering. No. You give your tight. All of your tight. And then after you give your tight, you give your mission commitment. Separate po yan. Pero pagkawin po ninyo, well, this is my, my time. And then, hatiin ko. Half sa mission, half. Sa time. Sa, so meaning, sa harap na Panginoon, di ba? Walang value yung pera mo. Amen? So if you keep doing it again, pinulit mo naman. Another 1,000. <laughs> and sabi mo sa Panginoon Lord thank you dear God that you blessed me and you have money and you went to SM and you went you buy groceries and then nakalimutan niyo po yung tight niyo and then time na po sa, sa worship service then Lord next time na lang you know what hindi po dapat, sabi po na Panginoon if you have this income seek God first how can God bless you if you don't follow His word so if you don't follow your word, the word of God, it's like your, pinulit niyo naman yung pera niyo. How can God multiply something if you don't follow His instruction? Amen? Pinulit niyo naman. 
Last 1,000. Sino po may ari nito? Isa uli ko na. Amen? You know what? There are times in our life na tayo po, we feel, ano po ba? We feel like sayang. Sayang yung pera na pinunit. For there are times in our life na masayang po tayo sa pera na pinunit for yung one soul that dies and goes to hell. Hindi po tayo masaya na. Sometimes sabihin pa natin, mabuti, namatay yan. Walang pinta kasi yan eh. Amen? We must value so more than this. Amen? But if you value the ministry more than this, meaning you keep your money well, God will bless you. Amen? But if you don't value God more, parang pinunit niya na yung pera niyo. So, please na po yung lahat ha. There are times po na, you know what, during the last 2020, I heard there are a lot of churches na nasira po because of pandemic. And there are Christians, parang wala lang sa kanila. Parang wala lang nangyari. Kasi sa isip nila, mas sayang po yung value ng pera kaysa ministry. There are Christians that they don't value their pastor. They don't help their pastor. Well, We stop. We stop. That's fine. But you know what? We need to put importance to the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Sayang po yung pera. Totoo. Sayang talaga yung pera. Sino mga gusto nito? Sayang talaga tong pera. But I tell you this: masayang po ang ministry if the ministry will be dead. If we're not going to help the ministry of God. Amen. If you seek God first, ang pera po'y maghahabol sa'yo. That's true. If you're going to read the Bible, if you seek God first, who owns everything? It was God. Who created everything? It was God. Not you. Not me. Amen? Kung gusto po na Panginoon, bihiyahan kayo ng marami, God will do that. Why? Because... He's God. Amen. And He's the same God that we worship. He's the same God before and today. Amen. But there are times in our life, oh, we value more treasures than God. Amen? Right. You know what? Sa Israel, oh, meron tatlong sea. Three sea. Meron Mediterranean Sea, meron Sea of Galilee, and then meron pong Dead Sea. Mediterranean Sea po, is this is the great sea that connects all the sea. Pag may magpunta po sa Israel, dahil po sila magdaan sa Mediterranean Sea. From Mediterranean Sea supplies the Sea of Galilee. But before it supplies to the Sea of Galilee, ano po, pinifilter po yung tubig fountain sa, sa ano po, sa mountain of Galilee. Meron malaking fountain there. And then yun pong fountain is nagbibigay ng tubig doon sa Sea of Galilee. So kaya po ang Sea of Galilee, it's called Sea of Galilee, but it's not a salt water sea, it's a fresh water sea. Yung Sea of Galilee. Kasi yung tubig niya is galing sa fountain from mountain of Galilee. Galing sa mountain of Galilee. And when it receives the blessing, you know what? The, the Sea of Galilee knew that there, uh, there is another sea that needs him, and that is the Dead Sea. And then the Dead Sea is just receiving water from the Sea of Galilee. But the Dead Sea, ang Dead Sea po is end point. Wala po siyang daliwaya ng tubig. So ang Dead Sea is just nothing. Even though the, the, the Sea of Galilee is a fresh water sea, pagdating po sa Dead Sea, ang Dead Sea po is times 10 ang saltness compared to the original sea. Because the Dead Sea just, ang Dead Sea po is just receive, 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 and hindi po siya marunong mag-give. You know what? The, the Sea of Galilee is the Sea of the Lord. Makita po natin sa Bible, where did Jesus walk? In the Sea of Galilee. Where Jesus Christ called Peter, James, and John? In the Sea of Galilee. Where Jesus Christ preached? And there are 5,000 men. Jesus Christ fed them. Where did He do that? In the Sea of Galilee. When Jesus Christ was risen, 
He gathered his disciples where? In the Sea of Galilee. Because God loves the Sea of Galilee. Because this sea is a fruitful sea. Because it always gives its water. But the Dead Sea point. If you are a Christian, we must be the Sea of Galilee. The fountain of life is the Lord Jesus Christ. He filters the blessing and He gives the best blessing. So when we receive God's blessing, we must be like the Sea of Galilee that knew to address the Lord Jesus Christ where He gives. But if you are like the Dead Sea, you just receive, receive, and you don't know how to give, you are a dead Christian. You are not a fruitful Christian. Amen? You know what? We must be committed to first travel, next to talk, and also we must be committed to transform lives with the gospel. Ang pinunit ko po ng 1,000 pesos kanina is zero copy po yun, back to back. Hindi po yung totoo. Ito po yung totoo. Wala po, kalitan niyo po eh. Salamat po. Tignan mo po yung binalik ko. Sirox copy mo yan. Well, how do we value our life? Do we value God more important than anything sa buhay natin? No, we must be committed to travel, to talk, and to transform lives. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, missionary. Amen. Are we blessed? Amen. Have we been reminded? Later, we will show his presentation. I was thinking a while ago, that we we have different uh, kami bang may sa basketball kaya lahat ng patungkol sa basketball mapabola mapa basketball player mapapalabas we do support and it takes our attention now how about the gospel we thank the lord that that the gospel again uh, has been preached and we have been reminded of what the gospel has done to us by that gospel save my soul the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ did not just save my soul, it even called me to preach. That's why I am a pastor. And you know what brings joy in my life most of the time? Should be the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Knowing that you're saved, knowing that you're bound for heaven, even trials are there. The gospel is that positive and perfect thing that God has given to this man, a sinful man. And so... What should I do with the gospel? Yeah. Are you with me? And those are the things that have been reminded. I need to talk. That as the missionary shared that uh, second point. I remember the many times, the many opportunities that we have to talk, that we can talk. Alam niyo ba na may mga tao madali natin kausapin? Nagpapapedicure ka, nag-grab ka. It is a captive audience. Diba? Meron kang Facebook account, ipopost mo na lang doon. Meron kang kaibigan, meron kang best friend. We have many opportunities, opportunities for that gospel talk. How much we have done it. Sa mga classmate mo, sa mga friends mo, sa mga under mo. Are you with me? Kung ikaw ay misis, yung mister mo, under mo, atawad mo ng best friend. I mean, marami tayong mga kayang gawin para sa ibang elyo. Magbigay ng trucks, yun yung mga madadali. Doon ka muna sa level 1. Yeah. Magbigay ka ng trucks. Have you, have you been given tracks? Giving tracks? Oh, so yun, sana natataka yun. Isa yun, yung pagtatak ng gospel track, kasama rin yun sa mga madadali. Tatak-tatak ka lang eh. Wala namang pipigil sa'yo sa pagtatak. So hanggat may walang track, walang tatak na gospel track, tatakan mo. Ngayon, pag meron ka na, isang tolk eh. Simple lang yung mga ganun eh. Nagdadrive tayo. Maabutan natin. Tapos pangalawa, hindi lang yun. Pag sabi ko nga sa inyo, kanina sa basketball, hindi lang kami yung para, oh, may, may basketball lang, libre Misa, kahit wala, hahanapan ng parang eh. Dahil hilig namin eh. Pupunta yeah. kami ng San Rafael Bulacan para mag-basketball. Kalayo! Di ba? Gagawa ng paraan para magka-uniform. May gagastusan namin. Hindi namin basta makakita lang kami ng empty court. Laro. Kundi kahit wala, hahanapan namin. Ganon din dapat sa gospel. May mga easy things tayong nagagawa. Nakakapag-usap tayo. Pero paano na yung, yung makakagastus tayo? Yan. 
May missionary po punta ng Thailand. Di pa tayo makapunta ng Thailand. Walang magtuturo ng gospel sa Thailand. Eh sinahanda, iiwanan yung napakagandang city ng Davao para pupunta ng Thailand. Diba? Makasali nga ako dyan. Amen? Maka, maka, magkaroon ako ng konting part dyan sa, sa mission dyan. Anything about the gospel, let us make an effort for the salvation of these lost souls of the Thai people, of the lost souls of the Khmer people, of the lost souls of the Filipino people. I am thinking of how can we send these preachers to the to the to the towns in the Philippines that have not received the gospel yet. Kung meron pa, kung saan wala pang barang, barangay na wala pang ibang helio. There are many ways that we can do. Just have the heart for the gospel. It is the gospel that saved my soul, that gave me life, that gave me hope, that made my heart rejoice. Then I will do something for the gospel. We have all the opportunities. Let us again move for the gospel. Amen. Amen. Souls are still needing of help. Marami tayong magagawa, mga mahal kong kapatid. Iba-iba tayo ng area. Just try to imagine kung lahat lang tayo estudyante. O lahat tayo, kagaya nyo ni Preacher Joel. O lahat tayo, pastor. Hindi pwede, iba-iba tayo eh. May doktor, may pastor, may estudyante, merong nagtratrabaho, merong nangangamuhan. Lahat yan, mission field. Maibahagi natin ang gospel. May pastor's wife, may mga iba-iba. Mag magagawa natin yan. Amen? Yeah. Sana may tawagin pa ang Panginoon dito para mangaral ng Ibanghelyo. Yeah.